Hello, everyone on the internet. It's good to see you again. I feel like I've gotten, I know my Logitech camera really well. Um, well, um, it's been a amazing, uh, amazing weekend. Um, we set out uh, 24 hours ago to try to build a kind of a real sense of online presence um, to get everyone hacking together um, instead of the real world, instead of in a conference center on the internet. Uh, we put together a bunch of um, tents. Uh, conference center tents in the form of uh, Slack and um, uh, Zoom rooms. Uh, and, and, and we had um, over 750 uh, uh, registrants and uh, applicants from around the world. 140 projects were built, a tremendous amount of discussion, uh, a lot of commits and a lot of comments, um, and uh, hopefully a few friendships made along the way as well. Uh, we also got a chance to show some of you folks um, uh, something pretty cool and nifty we built uh, in order to showcase some of the uh, the, the projects that were built today. Um, it's called Frontier. You can check it out at frontier.pioneer.app. And it serves as an interesting directory of kind of interesting projects being built uh, in this uh, in this hackathon. Um, a quick primer and reminder, I guess if you have no idea what uh, Pioneer is, that's great. Um, uh, because we get a chance to introduce ourselves to you. We're basically trying to do kind of ex things like exactly like this hackathon, but uh, in an evergreen way. Um, we believe that, uh, you know, sp sprinkled around the world are thousands, tens of thousands of um, Facebooks and Instagrams and WhatsApps that are uh, just a, a GitHub repo with a couple of commits left in it um, that, that kind of got dropped along the way. And pioneers have kind of uh, a, a way of trying to take those seeds and to turn them into, you know, fully grown trees and plants. Um, we're a fully remote online accelerator in that sense. Um, you should check it out if you haven't had a chance. Um, it's kind of fun. There's an online dynamic leaderboard that's both motivating um, to, to help you to kind of focus on whatever side project you have and potentially um, helps you become a pioneer one day uh, where you get uh, access to funding, lots of crowd credits, uh, and a whole community of other people. It's, 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 it's truly an attempt, um, we'll see if we're successful, to build a city on the internet of founders. Um, so um, uh, before we um, kind of continue uh, today, I wanna give you a very brief introduction of what we're gonna do. We're gonna have um, uh, uh, four uh, judges um, walk through um, the finalists of our hackathon um, uh, out of our 140 projects, we managed to whittle, whittle it down to um, eight or so, and, and they're gonna kind of interview and, and engage with the finalists. Um, for those of you watching on, on Twitter, I highly recommend um, engaging in the actual uh, kind of internal live stream UI, which you can register to access, which gives you access to vote and both chat with other people watching the stream. Um, and then um, we'll be asking people to uh, um, to of course, uh, you know, exert uh, exert influence in the most democratic way possible to, to get them to vote and um, uh, to see what they think is most interesting. Um, brief introduction on our four judges. Um, uh, Rajiv uh, is um, the CEO of Tandem, a very interesting kind of remote first company, the kind of modern day buddy list, um, probably uh, uh, totally abusing the pitch of his company, but you get the point. Modern day buddy list that gives you a sense of presence with your coworkers throughout the internet. Um, Andy's actually an old colleague of mine. Um, Andy used to work uh, at Apple um, and has since to, to gone on to work at uh, Khan Academy and um, uh, do a tremendous amount of work on the internet, in particular kind of a building, maybe uh, we can think of it as a next generation, um, mother of all demos. Uh, if, if, uh, if the world really does have another Doug Engelbart, it's probably Andy. Uh, Amjad runs a wonderful company called Replit, um, which is probably the fastest way to get up and going um, uh, in terms of kind of working on a uh, on a small coding project, um, perhaps bested only um, by the uh, last uh, judge, Guillermo, who runs a company called Zeit, uh, works on a similar piece of infrastructure. I highly recommend um, you use either one of those projects um, if, you're, if you're trying to get, get up and go um, uh, quickly on the internet. Anyway, um, that is a very brief overview um, of what's gonna happen today. Um, I am going to turn it over in terms of the dynamics of how the judging will happen. I'm gonna turn it over to Jackson. Um, uh, to tell you a little bit more uh, about the details of how all of this will go down. Jackson? Awesome. Excellent. Thank you, Daniel. All right, so uh, as Daniel mentioned, we will have eight finalist presentations today. Um, 
starting off. Um, but before we do that, uh, let's just do a quick overview of, of how the judging will work. They will be primarily focused on our four judges on the, the value, uh, the polish, uh, the technical difficulty uh, of these projects. Um, our, our first two judges are going to be Amjad and Andy, and they will be uh, judging the first finalist, who is Manted. And uh, we will bring them up momentarily here. Me memory, uh, Manted is second. Ah. Memory Eye is first. Manta will be joining us in just a minute. Hey. Hello. Can you add my uh, teammates as well? Let's check that out. Uh, which, which teammates? That is Raza Habib and Peter Hayes. Well, Andy and Amjad, thank you so much for being here, and Jordan as well. Um, looking forward to seeing what you got. Hello. Pleasure. How's everyone Sunday? Great. 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 The sun just came out, so it's awesome. Mostly been reading. It's been glorious. Great. All right. All right, I'll disappear. Uh, Team Memory Eye, go for it. I'll share my screen. I cannot share my screen. Is it possible to share our screens? She wants to go up, no sharing. It's better if we can share. Anyway, we can start casually. So wouldn't it be great if you could remember everything you read on the internet? Oh, what's going on? That's it. Are we doing it? Sharing screens? No, yet. not yet. Anyway, all right, you we, are good. We can share screen. All right, let's do this. Good. Close this stuff down. Cool. Anyway, so wouldn't it be amazing if you can uh, remember everything you read on the internet? Um, there is one way of doing this. It's called space repetition. We've figured it out, but you have to use a tool like Anki, which is used, but it has two major flaws. One, you have to go and make these questions. It's slow, so slow and tedious, most people wouldn't bother. And the second one is that it relies on you to set aside those 10 to 15 minutes of personal willpower to go through those questions yourself. So we're building a Chrome extension that solves this and we're using AI. So I will run through it. Already got the extension installed. Uh, it's called Memory AI, Mem Memory, there we go. And Say you're reading this fascinating article about Segnosaurus, and you might want to read this passage here and think, okay, that's fascinating. I'd like to set that to memory. And so all you do is click add to memory. And this Chrome extension now has gone pink. It's extracted the data from the, from the article. And we're now generating questions and answers so that you can add it to your Anki deck automatically. Uh, Razan, maybe talk about the uh, ML. Yeah, so there's a little bit of machine learning sits behind this, and it's it's still a V1. We'd love to improve it in further versions, but essentially we have a we took feature vectors from Spacey and trained a naive Bayes model to work out if a word is likely to be a good answer for a question or not, and then we create closed completion questions using that model. So it basically says, I'm going to remove these words if I think they're going to make good questions, and then the question is put in your bank, and you try to recall the missing word. And so once you hit Anki, it goes to an Anki card. So these are all going to be sent over to Anki, which I can load up. Yes, good. Demo's working. Right. Uh, and then I go to my deck, and I can see where the latest <laughs> ones. And hey, I've got all this stuff about Stegosaurus. Your, your screen share, I think, is frozen, Jordan. Oh, no. Oh, there oh, I can go. see it all right. OK. Yeah, can you see this one? Yeah. So yeah, I mean, we've now got the Anki cards, which you can train at any time. So this is what we've built in 24 hours. Um, we're going to be building the NLP to make it full, like proper natural language question answers. But we're also going to block any distracting sites so that you have to answer a few of your Anki questions before you go on them. 
And so that solves the two big problems. The first one being it's hard to add them. And the second one being it requires discipline to actually do this. Yeah, and in terms of tech stack, we use um, Svelte and Webpack for the front end and Fast API, Python, and Spacey for the back end, which is hosted currently on AWS. I think that's it. So I think we go for questions now. Thanks. Feel free to go first, Andy. Uh, sure. Okay. So uh, obviously this is an area of interest for, for me. Um, so looking at the, the questions that were generated, I, I would say um, one of them was, was pr pretty good. Uh, two of them were clearly not good. And then one of them was kind of middling. Um, can you say more about your strategy of how you would actually improve um, the feature extraction, question generation, whatever you want to call it? Yeah, so I, I can probably take that. So Peter and I are actually both machine learning PhD students at UCL. We do quite a lot of NLP work. And our group has actually done some papers on question generation. So using neural networks and reinforcement learning to do question generation. Actually, the purpose there is to improve machine comprehension. But the same technology could be used for Anki. It's just too much to do in 24 hours. Uh, I find it remarkable that you did uh, what you did in 24 hours. So uh, nice work. Thanks. Um, so I, uh, I think one of the things that I'm like, when I'm reading on the internet and I'm doing a lot of research is that I, I don't want to sort of be disturbed. I'm like, I have a hundred tabs open and opening different tabs, but I think just like the act of selecting text and adding to memory could be, could even be disruptive or could me could mean not using the extension. Is there a world where um, this could either happen automatically or after some kind of research session, I can like go back and, and say, these are the things that I want to remember. Uh, you know, I've learned something useful here. And, um, and uh, yeah, I guess my general question is how to reduce friction in order to make this as useful as possible without sort of disrupting or having me remember to like do that action of adding to memory AI. May, yeah. may, I, come, may I come back to that one? So I, I think it's a great question and I totally agree. I hate distractions and push notifications whilst reading. Um, the first thing I would say though, is that if you compare that to the current experience of using spaced repetition software, which they have to go to an offline desktop app and use a very clunky interface to add these cards one by one, it's already an order of magnitude better. Um, but I do agree with you, it would be nice to have this happen fully automatically or afterwards. I think doing it fully automatically somewhat defeats the point because part of the space repetition is to make memory a choice for you to decide the things that are most important to you and commit them to memory. So I think what we would love to have is sort of maybe, maybe you could use this once you finish reading an article, but I don't think we'd ever want to do it fully automatically. Any more for any more? Great. Awesome. Thank you so much, Team Memory AI. Cool. Thank you. It's been really Thank fun. You. Thank you. Brilliant. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Now, Congrats. before um, before uh, before Jackson, before I let you continue, I do want to remind um, everyone of of something very quick. Um, we, we are in the live stream. We're captured. We're trying to captivate the attention of hundreds, maybe thousands of people. Um, um, super important, I find, with with live streaming because um, because Zoom is kind of less interesting than meeting someone in the real world. I highly recommend um, everyone else uh, who's presenting to try to be as interesting as possible and as dynamic as possible because it's super easy. I find you know we all gone through this process of being on Zoom for three weeks now, um, and certainly with Pioneer for for you know a year and a half. Um, it's super easy to zone out, to tab out. And so we want to keep people engaged, right? And so uh, talk fast, be energizing, uh, you know, take two shots of espresso before, whatever you can. Um, the more you get people engaged, the, the higher the odds they vote for you, the higher the odds you get all of the winning and the glory associated with that. That being said, Jackson, I'll leave it to you to continue. Great. Awesome. All right. With that said, um... Let's continue on to our next 
presentations. I would like to briefly remind everybody in the audience um, that we are going, uh, if you are watching through our site, to, uh, to please be voting on the, the presentations that you see, because we will use audience voting in addition to our, judge, uh, our judges to come up with our final decision. Um, and, and just a note on format, you might have noticed already, we will do one question from each judge, um, and Amjad and Andy will be on for three more presentations before we move to our next set. Next up, we have Manted. Uh, oh, uh, okay, cool, uh, that's us. Yeah, uh, hi guys, so uh, we are Manted, and um, what we do is screen sharing. So you might have to share my screen. Uh, it is shared. Um, so because we are a screen sharing, you know, hackathon project, I think it might be a good idea to, uh, you know, uh, test the load on this live. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make a room, uh, copy the link to the room and see if this works and uh, link it in the, um, the Pioneer live stream channel, just so you get the, you get to see what the quality is. Hopefully the server does not melt. And on that note, I will lead Rahul to uh, start the introductions. <laughs> hey, um, screen, carrying, screen sharing quality can suck, especially for people on weaker connections. And this is because like screen sharing through video streaming is a trade off between frame rate, quality, bandwidth, and this results in like subpar results. So we were sick of staring at pixelated screen shares from professors and our peers for the past few weeks while we're like trying to collaborate on projects. And the beautiful thing about the web is that there's a perfectly serializable way of every web page, which is just a DOM representation, rather than converting a, a video, a page into a video and then trying to compress it. And so we came up with the idea of Manted, which is a service that completely does away with this laggy video streaming. And instead we use this native DOM updates, these really powerful updates for a buttery smooth, pixel perfect screen sharing experience. And it works perfectly even for people with bad internet connections because it takes up roughly one gigabit per second of bandwidth only. Uh, and we can do that and still transmit a really high resolution stream that looks exactly like it does on the host computer. Yeah, uh, so on that note, I'll give you guys a demo of what we currently support, like basic stuff like, you know, scrolling, like DOM mutations, give us an upvote if you will, uh, work. I don't know about the quality on the uh, Zoom live stream, but if you check out the Manted link, it should be pretty good. We can also do things like, you know, switch between tabs and it will also reflect that, even navigate across pages, uh, type a few things. Um, if it's a bit laggy, the server's probably melting. See, we have 36 viewing the session. There's no optimization at all. So uh, hopefully nothing completely collapses. Um, we can do stuff like aggressive DOM mutations, things that would result in large um, screen paint changes. Um, for instance, completely changing to a different page with this scroll bar and along with animations. And it will work you know, flawlessly at 60 FPS scrolling, one megabit per second of bandwidth. Um, you can also like, uh, uh, um, when you stop, so when you're sharing, um, I can see, I don't know if you guys can see this on my Zoom screen, but there's a badge on the Chrome extension that tells me exactly how many viewers are viewing my stream. And if you are also viewing, I see there's 38 of you, there's a badge in the lower right corner of the screen share that lets you see like how many other people are out there. And if I want to stop the stream, uh, you know, Just note uh, on time here, Team Anted. Yep. Uh, and if, if I want to stop the stream, I can uh, click this and stop sharing instantly. It's like instant share, instant stop. Technology. Hope you like it. Yo, I think this is a uh, really clever. I, I love the way that this is kind of like X Windows for uh, uh, for the modern era, and. Uh, it, it makes me wonder, um, what, what's, what's your go-to-market on this? Do you have any ideas about how you're going to just completely destroy everybody with this? Well, so the, so the problem is that this is limited to a certain extent. Like, if you have asset, we don't currently support asset rewriting, like services like LogRecord or FullStory. They have it solved, but they don't support real-time functionality. So we need to, like, add X asset proxying through our servers. So you can see images that are meant for someone else, essentially. And then we could probably start thinking of productionizing something like this. And even in those cases, if there are websites that won't work with this, we would have to fall back to video. So in like rare cases where this won't work uh, to have like a complete product and not something that breaks how uh, in like some websites and not others. Yeah, but otherwise, you know, I think the concept is fundamentally sound. <laughs> yeah, that was going to be my question actually, is that uh, it seems like any uh session based application any also javascript heavy application might not work with this right or 
Um, this sends DOM updates. So JavaScript heavy applications work fine. Like I can visit, you know, oh, I stopped the session. I'm going to start a new session. Um, mm -hmm. I can visit Reddit. And mm -hmm. because it captures the full DOM, it doesn't actually run any JS, um, nothing will, will fail. It only encounters issues when you're trying to do things like uh, go to, you know, uh, like video streams or images that are directly embedded that don't have the cookie pass through, which we can solve. Or websites mm -hmm. that have iframes, for example. Yeah. Mm -hmm. is, is, this a, 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 is this like a, a problem people uh, have today uh, and maybe slower inter internet connections where, um, or, or tell me about how you, why did you want to solve this problem? What was the uh, pain point? So uh, my, my company, we're remote, um, obviously. We were based in New York City. So uh, if you can see my, my screen again, I'm, I'm anted. Um, mm. But we were using Tandem for screen share. And, and Tandem is great. It's a great product. It, it has a lot of support for nifty things. But every time we tried to screen share, it was just compressed. Mm -hmm. Like you can see on my screen, it's just blocky. We have the same problem with Zoom. Text, a small text, especially on stuff like spreadsheets, when you're moving fast is unreadable. And I am on a 100 megabit internet connection. Um, don't mean to roast anybody too hard here, but we think there's a better way to encode screen sharing. And this is it. Cool. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Team Anted. Yeah. Awesome. Next up, we do have, uh, we have Cozy Room and our finalists are Aslan and John. Aslan and John, please note that uh, I will jump in with an audio reminder in about two minutes, uh, two minutes into your presentation. And uh, please let us know just very briefly where you're hacking from. Be curious for everyone to know. And they're coming on in just a minute. Hello. So uh, Cozy Room is a uh, space for casual meetings um, where you can organize house parties, uh, virtual coffee shop, poetry readings. Um, so we have a little demo that we'll screen share here. And so in this space, you can, you can move around and point to things. Um, you can talk to people in this space. Hello. Um, and yeah, in, interact with things, use emojis. And, and the idea is that uh, traditional like uh, video chats and audio chats are very disembodied. You don't have a, a spatial position. And this kind of brings the spatial element into, into meeting with people. And so it's more geared towards kind of just hanging out with people. We can put on some music. And uh, yeah, that's, I don't know, <laughs> just a nice casual space to hang out in. Yeah, and definitely possible to sort of envision uh, like an environment that people connect to asynchronously. So you can sort of be working while you're in a space here. And instead of everybody trying to dedicate all of their attention to a video chat um, this way, you can sort of be in there and uh, make yourself available. Exactly. Cool. So uh, a lot of people use games like, uh, say, Animal Crossing uh, or Grand Theft Auto or whatever to kind of hang out with their friends in a similar uh, spatialized way. Um, that's been going on for quite a long time time um, to, to kind of appify that uh, and make something that's disconnected from some other activity or experience uh, is an interesting approach. I'm curious how you see this differing from like what people do in game environments. Uh, one thing that I think differs from game environments is that uh, in game environments, it's very uh, immersive. Um, 
And so like you are forced to spend all your attention into this environment. Uh, you see that with all the like VR uh, chats where you have a body in the 3D environment, but you have to be wearing like a VR headset. And so this is something that I think would be nice to have in the background as I work. If I just like, for example, sit in a coffee shop and people can come up and talk to me, right? So it's like a virtual space that anyone can join in on. And, and uh, one other thought is since it's on the web, um, things like screen sharing, uh, potentially like the tool we just saw could be natively integrated here, making things like sharing and editing documents uh, much more comfortable instead of alt typing. It's cool. It reminds me of uh, Turntable. We used to hang out in Turntable uh, and, uh, and play music and things like that. That's, uh, uh, you know, as simple as it is, it's surprisingly uh, effective at creating a sense of presence. Um, I'm curious, are you envisioning this as to, uh, you know, I'll use it with my friends or will I go online at some kind of like public chat rooms and public rooms and I can go meet other people there? How are you um, envisioning people are gonna use it? I think definitely both. Um, we have it so that you can join a group name and uh, uh, a lot of people have joined in this chat here. So you can you can put in a group name to join and it joins all the uh, different browsers through WebRTC. So it's just connecting the browsers together. There's no servers in the back end um, doing heavy lifting. And so it can be used for just any use case. I can spin up a group for my friends or I could have a permanent group that uh, people can just join in online or host an event. Awesome. Thanks so much. Cozy team. Cozy room. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Next up, we have Music Dippity. Uh, Ricky and David will be joining us. In the meantime, this is a reminder to anybody who is on our live stream uh, on our site to be voting for your, uh, your favorites. Again, we will use those for our final criteria uh, in deciding our winners. How are you? Ricky. Hello. Um, checking if David's trans there. Yeah, there, there he is. is. All, All right. right. Hello. Hello, everyone. OK, Hope so David and I are hacking from San Francisco. Um, so our project for the hackathon is Music Dippity, Music Plus Serendipity. Uh, so, and let me begin sharing my screen as well. Um, so OK. Sure, you guys can see that. Okay, so the idea is uh, we wanted to create serendipity online. So why? Well, scheduled Zoom calls could be fun, uh, but they are far from like the most delightful spur of the moment type of experiences that we have uh, in real life. Kind of like you know when two friends go on a road trip and they sing at the top of their lungs because their favorite song just came on the radio, or like when like a cute baby like trips and falls in a really adorable way, everybody laughs. Uh, like we don't have moments like that on our internet and we wanna create more of, more of it. So our idea is take a solo activity like listening to music uh, and tell you when your music choices happen to overlap with that of a friend, kind of like in real life when you talk about music and you're like, oh, I just listened to that song. Um, so uh, I will demo it, hopefully it works um, on the, uh, so the way, what you do is you just uh, log in with Spotify, you get your friend to log in with Spotify as well. And then uh, now Music Dippity has my listening history and has the song I'm currently listening to, which you can confirm with this uh, bot. The Spotify on the right side is my Spotify. Um, <clears throat> and then behind the scenes, like, you know, we've, uh, David and I are friends and we have our phone numbers with uh, Twilio already. Um, so for the purposes of the demo, I have uh, David's Spotify on the left side. I'm gonna refresh it because that's why the demos weren't working before. And then my, my, uh, my Spotify is on the right side and we're both listening to music on the radio uh, on, the, on our iPhones. Um, and what should happen is I should receive a text. Yes. Uh, and the text says, if you can't see, I'll show you. David just played the weekend. Ricky played the weekend a minute ago. 
since you're both on Spotify right now, how about a quick game of name that weekend song? Uh, and I hit Y and watch what happens. The, the, the two Spotify's have now been synced to the same song. And the first person to answer with the name, and you can't cheat, I'm cheating right now because I'm broadcasting, but, uh, but uh, I lost because I got the right answer, but David beat me to the punch. Um, anyway, that's it. That's, the, that's what we try to do. We try to create a serendipitous or a near serendipitous moment uh, and then use that to carry us to a live, spontaneous, fun social experience. Um, yeah, and I'm just gonna ask you guys the same question that we started with before at the beginning of the hackathon, which is how might we um, create more serendipity online? So thank you. Yo, I love it. I uh, wanna hit you with just a, give, give us your top three to five like other games that you would inject in those moments. Yeah, um, so we, we thought about this. There were implementation challenges, obviously, but we wanted to create uh, kind of like your, you, your, the, the two of your mixtape, kind of like back in the day when we create mixtapes for each other, we wanted to create a playlist that you can listen to uh, and have like a 10, 15 minute listening party uh, and even put uh, a temporary Zoom or a, a call where you can experience that together. So again, something fun, small, spontaneous that you will be willing to do because you're delighted by the serendipitous thing that just happened. Um, uh, yeah. Well, uh, one on the evil devil advocate side, we uh, thought it'd be funny, like once you guys have this match where you guys do listen to the same music, then you actually get to control the other person's music for 10 minutes and you get to just make them listen to whatever you think they don't wanna to listen to. And one thing we didn't get to build was we wanted to create a profile of like how dissimilar you are. So how unlikely it is for you guys to end up ever listening to the same artist. Uh, and then you could have a lot of fun with very dissimilar profiles and just kind of like music bomb them. Uh, that's cool. Um, would you expand this beyond music and how would you do that? Yeah, uh, another pioneer uh, in the uh, comment says uh, they wanted to do it for online articles. Um, we thought about music, we thought about movies just because there's more of a chance of overlap, like people consuming the same kind of trendy content. Um, yeah, so articles are valid. I think movies are valid. Um, yep. Yeah, we, we didn't think article, we thought articles would be maybe a little too sparse and maybe not well, sparse for the long tail. And then when there's like something that everyone's sharing, like everyone's reading, it's not quite as delightful if you both read the same front page New York Times article. Uh, we did think about trying to do it for Netflix. We'd have to like do some interesting browser scraping because they don't have an official API, but that could be interesting. It'd be a little less serendipitous. It'd be like Ricky's two episodes behind on Westworld. Do you want to wait for him to catch up so you guys can watch it together? Uh, maybe. All right, awesome. Thank you, Music Dippity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sandy. Thanks, Amjad. And thank you so much, Andy and Amjad, uh, for joining us, not only for this presentation, but the last four. We look forward to your, uh, your final decisions on these, on these finalists. Thank you, guys. Next up, uh, from our judging front, we have uh, Guillermo Rush, who is um, CEO of Zeit and Rajiv Iyengar, who's the CEO of Tandem. You also heard from, if you were part of the tournament, Rajiv on Saturday, he did an AMA uh, with our participants. Our next finalist is Fitness Camera with Miguel. Miguel, please let us know where you're hacking from and uh, I'll give you some audio warnings as we go. We are a bit uh, crunch for time. Go ahead. And the app is a fitness track you're using your phone's camera. So basically, let me show my screen. Can you see it? Yes. You can see the screen, All right? Yep. So basically it's a, an application that tracks your repetition uh, when you do exercises. So it's using TensorFlow under the hood, uh, human pose estimation, and then based on the key points of the, 
the person detected, then you can detect what the exercise is and you can count the repetitions. So all you need to do is you to put your phone on the floor against a wall and then and then you can start exercising. So it's pretty basic. There's not many features. It doesn't uh, it doesn't categorize exercises yet. It doesn't split uh, repetitions into different sets. It doesn't upload it uh, to the web. But I'm working on integrating it with Google Fit, so that you don't need to manually track your exercises. You can just use your phone or a webcam. I'll start with a question. Uh, and by the way, I think it's excellent. Really, really nice work, especially in a tight uh, timeline. So um, what are ways that you, can, that you can think that this will enhance people's ability to engage in exercise, to do it more frequently, to get fitter, maybe to develop better form? What are, what are the things that now that you have the technology, at least in a basic form, what are you excited about this enabling? Right. So for the Akaton, I could only implement the rep counting. But in the future, since you have all the key points of the person, you can uh, detect form and you can suggest improvements. You can draw lines uh, telling the user where to put uh, their arms or to go slower or faster. Or you can, you can basically add the angle of every joint on the body uh, using that. So Cool. Uh, I think it'd be Yeah. I think it'd be interesting to... Uh... Uh, maybe add gamification as well so that you can uh, congratulate, add music, accelerate the music, slow down the music, and so on. It's very, very cool. Yeah. This is, this is really cool. I'm thinking about this for like hangboarding, for rock climbing. Uh, when you think about make, taking this the next step to get this in the hands of many people, are you thinking of more making a general platform to allow people to customize it for their exercise? Or are you thinking more about picking a specific uh, type of training and really focusing on that. Right. So right now, my goal is to focus on people uh, staying home that cannot go to the gym. So basic body weight exercises. Um, basically, my pain point is that I track everything. I'm into the quantified self movement and tracking everything manually is a bit of a, of a pain. So if I can just use my camera or a third party camera like a, a wise cam, then I could just I could just track all my exercises without having to input anything. So it's the goal is hands free uh, exercise tracking, and the camera is just one of the ways uh, to, to to achieve that. Very cool. Awesome. Thanks, Miguel. All right. Good work. All right. Next up, we have. The Mall with Julie, Stefan, and Ethan. Uh, again, please let us know where you are hacking from really briefly and then get straight into it. Amazing, oh my goodness. Um, I'm Julie, I am hacking from Connecticut. And this weekend I hacked with my friend Ethan, who's in New York and Stefan, who is in Sweden. Um, so this was super, super awesome. Here, let me, uh, let me get my demo pulled up here. How do I, I can share. Right? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. You guys can uh, can see the app. Okay. Great. Okay. So um, we have been hacking this whole time and it came down to the last two minutes. So I'm quite tired right now and very nervous, um, but let's go through the demo. So uh, this past week, I went to a really cool online event um, a bunch of people joined a Google Meet session and we had a collaborative uh, Google spreadsheet with a bunch of different online direct-to-consumer shops. And um, 
So we all kind of went through some of those shops and we had a shopping spree. And um, some of those business owners from some of those online shops were on the call with us. They told us about their products. They did some giveaways. It was really, really awesome. Um, and it made me realize how long it's been since I've been shopping with my friends. Um, not only because I can't really go shopping right now, but just because we've all been shopping online for the most part. So I do a lot of online shopping. I personally have my own direct to consumer store online. I do custom gifts and custom laser engravings. And I realized that I really want to shop at stores like my own and stores like the ones in um, the spreadsheet with my friends. So uh, this weekend, um, Ethan, Stefan, and I came up with a plan around this idea and we built a small um, e-commerce platform where small businesses would be able to create storefronts and then we would surface the stores to people who are interested in them. So as a shopper, you would be able to indicate what kind of shopping experience you'd like to have, like what kind of um, things you're looking for, and you would be able to invite your friends to fill out the same form. If there's any particular kinds of shops that you like, maybe sustainably sourced shops or, or shops that are local to you, women-owned shops, you would be able to indicate that as well. Um, and if you have a price range that you're kind of looking at, or if you don't care about any of those things and you just want to see what comes up, what kind of stars come up. Um, so you and your friends would fill out this form and then we uh, pull together a list of uh, stores for you. We add you to, um, we add you to a session where you would uh, be put into a video call with your friends and then you would be shown um, the first storefront. So you can kind of go through storefront to storefront if you want. Um, if you want to look at a list of the stores, then you could um, skip around and you and your friends are seeing the same um, stores. So if you see something that either you really like or you really like for one of your friends, um, Ethan used to be my fashion advisor and um, I miss his great advice. So you would be able to add it to your list. Um, and then when people add items, uh, you get added to your general cart and then it links back out to- Timing note, Paul. Um, yep. Uh, Julie, right. yep. Yep. Um, it links back out to uh, the store so that you can purchase it on your own. Um, yeah, so I just think that this is a great fun shopping experience and I can't wait to use it with all of my friends next week. Thanks, Julie. This is this is so cool. I like how you've kind of replicated the the purpose or the the things, the experience without being too literal about translating shopping online. Uh, are, are there some things that you'd want to do next that you can uniquely do online, like taking advantage of the online format versus real life? Um, absolutely. So one thing that I did really love about the experience that I had was talking to the store owners. Uh, they had some really cool stories and it was nice to meet them in person. So I think that that would be really cool if you could have, um, it doesn't need to be a live video, but even just a video to hear about some of the products would be really cool. Um, we of course want to kind of uh, integrate like these really cool custom um, storefronts also so that you get some of that branding aspect too and, and uh, get some of that feel. And um, we did not get super far technically. so. <laughs> Uh, the next steps kind of would be um, to more properly integrate our video uh, connection and um, to maybe integrate like a more proper um, checkout system. Very cool. But we would definitely be able to like gather a lot of really cool data for these stores on what kind of um, products sell socially. I love it. Um, one question that I have is, how do you decide to focus on desktop versus mobile? And what would be your take on taking this to a mobile device? And, and what would that experience look like? Ooh, that is a really good question. Um, I haven't, so taking it global, I think would be really, really awesome. Um, I know that sometimes online shopping, uh, shopping in different countries can be really tricky, um, but that's definitely something that is worthwhile. I think um, I personally on Etsy, I buy things from 
uh, international stores all the oh, time. Oh yeah, and in particular, I was curious about like your mobile device, uh, like oh, what, mobile, um, not global. Yeah, gotcha. <laughs> because you, yeah, but also that's a great point, by the way. But um, in particular, uh, like the previous demo focused on like they showed as a, a phone right away. What's your take on um, how much would you, uh, how much energy would you spend on taking this to mobile devices rather than desktop devices? And how do you, what's the calculus that you do to make uh, to reason about that? Um, so for mobile, obviously, it's kind of tricky to have the video of um, your friends up at the same time as having the store up. So maybe we would just kind of make it a voice call if people wanted to use a mobile device. So probably we wouldn't spend that much time focusing on it. But um, certainly, I know 70% you know, of uh, web traffic is on mobile at this point. So it's definitely important that we address a mobile experience um, at some point. Nice. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Stefan and Julie. Great work. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. All right. Next up, we have uh, the project is Pan, and uh, Pavle is our finalist. He'll be up in just a minute. A reminder that this is our second to last presentation. Everyone who's watching via the live stream, please get your votes in now. Um, there'll be one more reminder in about 10 minutes here. Go ahead, Pavle and Omar. OK, thanks, Jackson. Oh, pilot, my pilot. So uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, good morning, good day. Uh, this is very excited. My name is Pavle. Uh, my teammate is Omar. I'm based in Belgrade, Serbia, and Omar is based in Berlin. And we came together to create a virtual space uh, that brings us a step closer uh, away from what current like Zoom conferencing has to offer and moving towards that vision of being in a fully VR, you know, uh, full-blown VR environment, which uh, Daniel mentioned in a keynote. But as he said, we are years away from you know that experience. But we have some tools to move one step forward from what Zoom has to offer. So Pan is basically a virtual space uh, where you can actually. Um, so what, what we figure out one one of the elements of like conferencing right now, like we're now in Zoom. And all the participants, when you're talking to me, I have a sense like you're all like lined up in front of me, you know, like uh, like uh, changing indexes in the array when you're talking to me. So I don't I don't really have a sense of being in the same place as you. So we wanted to we had that um, like hypothesis that if we like spatially distributed the participants, it will give us a more natural feeling of of being in the same place and communicating. So Pan is basically. Uh, uh, our attempt to uh, accomplish that. And I will try to um, share my screen. Um, just give me a second. Okay, so uh, I hope you're seeing uh, the, the Frontier page. So basically, uh, this is Pan. I'm gonna create a room. And I'm actually going to try to share it in, um, in a chat. So I will invite judges and Omar and also Jackson to uh, join me here. And so I'm just wondering, how do you yeah, know you've so reached that point where uh, your idea is like, you're giving up an idea and you move on to the next thing? And, how do you know? Uh, Shout out to you were way too slow. Um, so please we lower the volume, Pavle. We can't. Yeah. Level lower the volume. And a half. Okay. Um, the most inspirational example of killing ideas to me was uh, the co-founders of Code Academy. They, in the course of YC, which was three months long, started and killed twelve ideas. Um, they were just they were just brutal about it. They would like go test something, and if they didn't didn't feel like it immediately had fit, they just kill it. Yeah, let, uh, let's allow me to turn off the audio, but you get a sense that we had an audio and I don't have my <laughs> camera. This is all falling apart. But basically, okay, there's Omar, thank God. So basically the idea is that we have complete control over the 3D environment that we're in. So uh, I'm this uh, black square, obviously, and I can have control over positioning other participants like Omar here and also random music that we can use and, and basically the idea was that you can also uh, create like, like control the music and idea to have more control over the audio environment than you will have in uh, in a zoom talk or whatever and we can have nice uh, 
I mean, no team. Okay, well, sorry. But basically, it's a 3D environment that allows us to have more control over, um, you know, like our conversation and conversation with, with other people and have a more organic sense of their presence in our environment, but also have some cute things to make that experience more fun, also have control over maybe, you know, maybe if somebody is annoying or I don't know if you've been in a, in a Zoom call lately where somebody leaves the microphone on and then you hear an ambulance or a dog, dog barking and you have nothing, to, you can do nothing about it. But we wanted to have control over that and your environment and have it like a more in-person experience, but online. This is really this is really cool. Thanks for thanks for building this and demoing it. I mean, if, of course, you. it's it's something that um, I think is really needed. When when you think about uh, so, what does Omar see the same spatial arrangement as you? And why did you make if if so or if not? Why did you make that decision? Uh, no, uh, uh, we wanted for every participant to have uh, the control over the environment, you know, like maybe you like somebody more and you put them in front and maybe somebody's annoying and you put them in the back. And we also, when I was talking about music, like the idea is that you can have a shared experience, like shared, I don't know, Spotify list or maybe even share music from my computer or online radio, but you have a choice to turn it off if you don't want to listen to it. Like compared to being in an office where somebody plays uh, obnoxious music, you don't have a choice but to listen to it. And here you have more control of your environment in that sense. Cool. Yeah, this is very cool. Uh, thank you. Uh, one, I have two quick questions. Uh, mm -hmm. One is, how do you reason about like how big this 3D space would be? Uh, for example, I, I think of uh, an open world being super interesting or entering into someone's space and living out of it uh, inside the plan. And the other one that's related is, um, do, how do you decide about uh, having a, an avatar, like an mm -hmm. animated character versus having your actual video there? Yeah, well, first of all, I think going open space, I, I think in this case, uh, less is more, you know? We wanted to create an experience of being like in this time of being with your family or your, with your friends in the same space, even if you're, you know, uh, far away from each other and having that intimate atmosphere. That's why like a limited amount of space where you can be with your, with your uh, uh, friends uh, can be a more intimate atmosphere to have. And uh, what was the, what was the second question? Sorry. Uh, the idea of uh, switching between a profile photo or like a okay, yeah, yeah. interface versus uh, an I remember. Well, basically we didn't want to move too far from what Zoom has to offer. So we wanted to focus on like having the video feedback from each participant and, and be in kind of a same format, but with a twist and with more, you know, like spice added to it. So it's still, it's still the same feed that you would get in a conference call like this but you you can do much more with it and have more control and have a more organic experience over, uh, overall excellent thank you <laughs> thanks sorry jackson no worries great job guys thanks thank so much cool next up we have our final uh finalist here which is mirat and team and they will be uh presenting cabbage hello How's it going, everybody? Uh, I'm just going to be the spokesperson for the team because everyone is uh, lazing around on the Sunday morning. Um, so the project is uh, cabbage.af, got that domain just um, for no good reason. And uh, we're calling in from uh, Vancouver, Canada. Um, the name Cabbage is actually just a reference to uh, this game, Fibbage. That's a Jackbox TV game that, that uh, we've been playing that's really fun. So if anyone's familiar with Jackbox, they have a, a series of uh, games where you just share the uh, URL with people in your family and everyone kind of joins in from their phone. And uh, they're extremely fun and they're compatible with kids and uh, grandparents and everyone. But uh, one thing is you have to be online at the same time with the whole crew for the game to work. And the moment one person drops out, the whole game sort of falls through. But uh, obviously, we need some sort of asynchronous uh, behavior on the internet for things to work smoothly. So I really wanted to uh, work on a game uh, that um, is mostly asynchronous, but gets extra fun if everyone's online at the same time, sort of like a chat experience. 
And um, the game itself is uh, pretty much an exact replica of a game we play in real life with paper and pen with groups of friends. And I will now share my screen to show you. Um, so I don't know if it's easy to read the text on my screen, but um, the idea is uh, it's not really a game around like winners or losers. Uh, it's more like you prompt your friends uh, to either draw something, uh, in which case the next person would caption the drawing and then the next person would draw that caption and it would just keep going in a chain until everyone in the, uh, the group has had their round. And at the very end, the whole strip is uh, revealed to everybody and it sort of turns into a game of uh, telephone where the uh, concept changed because of people's misinterpretations at every point. And it's uh, usually hilarious and it's an excellent party game. And I really wanna be able to play this with my uh, family and friends who are like abroad or, or even just like with the group of friends here, it would be nice to have a website that I can go to a couple times a day just to see what other people have produced, spend five minutes adding my drawings and then check back later. Uh, so if I say new game, uh, we're just putting in a whole bunch of artwork everywhere. It's not done yet. And, uh, if I create a pioneer test room, uh, I'll actually share this link, uh, somewhere as well, if I can, excuse me one moment. I'm just going to put it into the, uh, chat on the pioneer page. Alrighty. So if anybody else can join the link I sent, we should be able to see each other in the chat here. Um, and here's the drawing canvas. Uh, it's very basic. Uh, there won't be any colors or uh, anything. It's basically just undo, redo, and a single um, pencil. And um, so the game mechanics is not done yet, but when it's done, it's going to alternate between uh, the drawing and the text. Um, and then there's going to be an index of games that are available, completed, and pending in the lobby. And that's about it for now. And then later down the line, after the hackathon, uh, we're going to uh, have different game modes where it's like a competition for uh, everybody gets prompted the same thing. You vote on the winner, that kind of stuff. And uh, that's about all I have for now. This is, this is really cool. I, I, I like your observation about the downside of synchronous games. Um, one of the challenges with asynchronous games, if they're turn-based, is you're not, it can slow everything down and actually pull the, the pace of the game away from going synchronous. Do you have any ideas on how you can make it, make it asynchronous but engaging for everybody at every time? Yeah, totally. So uh, the thing about this is there's no limit to how many people you can have in a room. And if there are no available prompts for you to pick up from other people, you can always start a new one. So as long as there are people who are willing to kill time on this, there should be at least something available for the next person to pick up. Um, so in that sense, I think it's going to have a natural cycle of just continuing to generate new content whenever there's people interested. So the one uh, tricky thing is going to be to notify everybody else when there's uh, a new prompt available. In which case, people are going to have to put in their email address or something. Um, but um, I think that problem is specifically solved because because of the way this game works. Cool. Uh, very cool. Uh, I could see myself playing this. It's super fun. And my question is related to Rajivs and also similar to the one I asked earlier is, how much do you think this is a game that's more suitable to installing an app or, or a website where you can uh, subscribe to notifications so then you can have that engagement uh, where you know you tune in for five minutes and then you go away and then the game re-engages you have you thought about those kind of uh, engagement dynamics yeah for sure uh so the the easy solution is just like a little box where you drop in your email address or phone number to get notifications and for the app version, uh, I would probably just do a um, native wrapper around the website and, and just have the notification feature plugged in that way. Uh, but I would probably do that last after it already took off kind of thing. All right. Thank you.
Cool. Awesome. Thank you so much, Murat. No worries. And thank you very much, Guillermo and Rajiv. Um, love the feedback, love the questions. These two, as well as Amjad and Andy, are now going to deliberate with the Pioneer team. Uh, and, and we're going to come with our decision in the next five minutes here. Um, so stay tuned. We might pop in here in a minute, but for now, we'll see you in a minute.
All right. Excellent. We are back. Uh, our judges have deliberated and come to their first, second, and third decisions. Before we get to that, um, I want to remind everybody that the, the, the criteria that they used were value, creativity, polish, and technical difficulty. They also um, considered a very highly the audience favorites, which uh, you were able to vote on throughout the presentations. Um, and they did come to our conclusion. I'll have Daniel announce that in just a minute. Before we do that, I just want to brief, uh, briefly thank our sponsors for the hackathon. Uh, Replit, Typeform, Hackers International, Hack Australia, Render, uh, also the folks at the COVID-19 hackathon that happened last week. A huge thank you to our live stream judges, Guillermo, Amjad, Andy, and Rajiv, and as well, all of our judges who participated uh, two hours ago to one hour ago uh, to help us buoy up to the surface our, our top 50 uh, finalists, uh, all those judges as well. Thank you so much. All right, Daniel, go for it. Hello. Thank you very much, Jackson. Hope everyone's having an enjoyable morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are. Um, well, um, I uh, have the honors of presenting to you um, the winners of this wonderful event that we put together. Um, uh, and um, before, um, before we get to that, um, we're really going to try to delay this like, uh, 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 like, like good television does. Um, before we get to that, I do want to mention a uh, big thank you, obviously, to everyone that contributed. Um, uh, and, you know, regardless of whether you want or not, um, you should take whatever thing you're working on and consider yourself a winner in the sense that you accomplished something over a weekend, um, you know, a period of time where most people are watching Netflix, you were productive. That's great. So you should continue working on it regardless of whether you want. Um, that, all that being said, um, uh, uh, our judges have deliberated, as Jackson said, taking into account also um, some of the uh, votes in, 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 in the live stream as well as on Frontier. And um, in third place, um, we have Cozy Room. Uh, this uh, was the project that was kind of um, using uh, the real world as a metaphor in, in terms of how to, you know, spatially mix in audio uh, over the internet, um, uh, you know, and, and uh, certainly has um, uh, a, a lot of interesting area of exploration ahead of it. Um, these folks are going to get $500 in um, uh, cold hard cash plus $300 in render credits and uh, six months uh, free uh, in Typeform credits. In second place, in second place, we have Music Dippity. Um, this is kind of the next generation Spotify um, social network. Uh, uh, I also think an amazing project uh, with a lot of potential ahead of it. Um, people, were, I think we're impressed with the originality. Um, uh, obviously, I think we, we'd all be potential users of it as well. Um, these folks are gonna win uh, $1,500 in cash $500 in render credits and six months of type form as well. And in first place, drum roll, please. Jackson, the next one we do, we should have some type of drum roll situation in here. Um, uh, in first place, we have Manted. Um, Manted is um, building kind of the next generation uh, encoding for, for screen sharing. Um, uh, you know, the, um, the DivX of, of uh, screen sharing maybe. Um, uh, these folks are gonna get $3,000 in cash. Um, We want to thank um, uh, all of our judges, and in particular, Amjad, for giving um, everyone who participated in the tournament three months free of Replit. Definitely give it a go. Um, and um, lastly, I do want to take an opportunity to walk you um, through something that kind of was the bedrock of, of this whole event, the thing that powered it, um, uh, is called um, Pioneer, uh, which obviously is, is uh, the project that we all run. And we, uh, we kind of launched this, um, we kind of launched uh, this thing called Frontier that I very quickly want to uh, walk you through that very much powered all the voting. This is kind of what it looks like. Um, uh, and uh, it, should, it, should, it should kind of look fairly familiar to you if you've, if you've read it or anything similar. Um, and, um, and, uh, uh, and um, you kind of have your, your usual controls. I, I won't want to bore you too much with that. Um, and you may be wondering um, why create, uh, you know, kind of another space on the internet so similar to others uh, that, that exist. 
um, what is kind of the difference of, uh, of, of Frontier? Um, we have, you know, a lot of cool and exciting uh, ideas of, um, of, the, of the software we might offer and, and kind of cool and and features we're building out. But the primary thing you should be thinking of when you think of Frontier is a space on the internet um, effectively for small projects, uh, for hack-like projects that are just getting started. GitHub repos that have only a few commits in them, so to speak. Um, this is not a strict rule, but um, it's an interesting experiment, we think, to try to build a, a place where, where people can unite and um, propel themselves uh, on, and, and get some feedback and commit themselves, no pun intended, to working on something a little bit more seriously. Um, so check it out, frontier.pioneer.app. Um, sign up, make an account, add some comments, um, become a good citizen of the internet, a good contributor. Um, and in all honesty, if things end up trending well, Pioneer serves as a great next step for you, um, where you can get proper funding and incorporation, the ability to turn what is a small project and you know into a proper company. Um, so all of that being said, I promised that was the one final thing. But the truly final thing that I want to do is very much thank the people that made um, today's um, internet content and yesterday's internet content possible, um, Sarv, uh, all the way from um, Singapore uh, on our team, uh, Rishi uh, in California, um, uh, very, very much built all of the code that uh, you all use today in the live stream as well as Frontier, and uh, Jackson, our, our, our fearless um, pilot, um, who's in an undisclosed location right now, um, uh, very much, uh, I, think, I think we all thank you for, for making this a compelling opportunity for us um, to do a little bit more this week and to go a little bit more beyond to punch above the, our weight. Uh, and with all that being said, thank you all for watching. Hopefully this was fun, enjoyable. Send us any feedback if you have it and we'll be back with more stuff soon. All right, thank you all.